everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about the parent absolute value function, the most basic absolute value function we could draw. That would be the function y equals absolute value of x, or f of x equals the absolute value of x. So this guy here. Okay. So to explore this, let's go ahead and hop over to GeoGebra. We'll go ahead and graph this in. And very important if you're using GeoGebra to graph this, you can write y equals or f of x equals, but we say y equals. The abbreviation for absolute value is ABS, okay, and so we'll put in ABS of what? Well, of X, and go ahead and hit enter. Uh, but you see we get this V-like graph up here, and we're going to make this uh, stand out a little bit better. So we'll right-click on it, go to color, we'll make it maybe red, style, increase the thickness, good. Okay, and we'll go ahead and copy and paste this over to our Photoshop canvas using Shift-Control-C. You can't just hit Control-C or Shift-Command-C. You have to, you have to... Shift Command C. So we'll paste this in here. Whoa. And uh, didn't want to draw on it. We wanted to make it a little bit smaller. Let me go ahead and drag this down a little bit. All right. So let's talk about this graph. What are some things we know about it? Starting with this, the basic shape of this graph is it looks like the letter V. Just like our parabolas look like U's, this looks like the letter V. In terms of domain, okay, think about this. In terms of X values, could I ever plug in an X value that I would never get back a Y value? The simple fact is the domain of this graph is all real numbers. You'll notice on your graph here, uh, this B, there are no X values for which my graph does not exist. So from negative infinity out to positive infinity, that set of X values right there, okay? Negative infinity to infinity, this graph ought to exist right here, okay? In terms of range though, notice it doesn't hit all of the heights, okay? It starts at a height of zero and precedes the go up forever and ever, okay? But it does include the height of zero. So notice when I say the range, okay, uh, the range of the function is starting at zero, closed bracket, zero, and then goes up to infinity with an open bracket. We, we use a closed bracket to indicate that it does actually reach a height of zero, okay? Now we say this function, this function, unlike some other ones we've been talking about, is even. Remember, even function just means this. If I were to have some function of x, f of x, okay, like this, and I were to plug in a negative x, let's say we'll find f of negative x, okay? My original expression was absolute value of x, but if I take out my x and I plug in now this, negative x, recall that the absolute value of anything is just its distance to zero. That's a fancy way of saying, oh, it makes whatever is in here positive for the most part, okay? So we'd say it would just come out to be equal to this anyways. And hey, guess what? We already know that this is the original f of x that I started with in the first place. So this chain of logic would say that necessarily, hey, guess what? f of negative x is the same thing as f of x, which is our definition of even functions, okay? So even, an even function, just means this. When you plug in a negative x, you get the same thing you started with anyways, okay? And the thing about even functions is that I listed here, they are symmetrical about the y-axis. So notice, notice our graph, it does uh, show symmetry about the y-axis. Okay, this graph, just like all of our other parent functions with the exception of one, the reciprocal function, has an intercept at zero, zero, okay? So the y-intercept, the same as the x-intercept. And then the last things we want to mention about this before we kind of compare it to the other parent functions and be done for the day is this. It is decreasing. Notice it has negative slope. But for which x values is it decreasing, okay? So you notice I say it has negative uh, slope or is decreasing from x values way out here on the left, negative infinity, up to but not including zero, okay? At zero here, we have this cusp. We have this rigid uh, bend right there, okay? So we say it's not actually, we're going to just not describe its behavior at zero, but up to an x value of zero, our graph is going downhill. And it is increasing on the x interval from zero out to positive infinity. So from here to here, you know, from zero out to positive infinity, those x values, our graph is going uphill. So the last thing we're going to do is actually head back over to GeoGebra. We are going to graph every single parent function I've discussed, at least in my videos, all together and say, do they have anything in common? I'm going to turn on my absolute value graph last. So we say, okay, so our first parent function was y equals x, our identity function. Goes through 0, 0, it also goes through the point 1, 1. We say y equals x squared. It's our squaring function. Here's our u-like parabola. So it goes through 0, 0 on the point 1, 1. Let's go to our cubic function, y equals x cubed. Here's our, our John Travolta looking graph. It goes through 0, 0 on the point 1, 1. It's even better. We say, how about the square root function, y equals sqrt in GeoGebra of x. It's our sideways half of a parabola, okay? But it goes through 0, 0, and 1, 1. All right, even better, we say how about y equals 1 divided by x. Now we start to get a little interesting, and I'm actually going to change the color of this one. We'll right-click on it, make it a little bit thicker. How about we change it to a bluish color? 
see a little bit better. It does not go through the point zero zero. It doesn't like originate from this point zero zero. However, you could say it kind of is centered about it if you look at it and does actually proceed through the point one one. And last but not least, the graph we just did, I can just click on it, turn it back on, it'll be in red. Okay, it'll be a little bit easier to see. It kind of overlaps with our identity function y equals x. But the fact of the matter is this. You need to memorize the basic shapes of your parent functions, but for the most part, you could say they either start or originate around, start at or originate around the point zero zero, and proceed through one one in their simplest form. Of course, we could say take it times two, and all of a sudden I'm changing that, but these are the basic shapes of the parent functions.